Hi, my name is Tracy Klarner, and today we're going to talk about the tragic results of racial bias in media reporting, namely the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Biased reporting by media sources can be very influential in molding the opinions of viewers and listeners, possibly building or reinforcing a stereotype that already exists about a certain group of people. Hurricane Katrina and the aftermath directly following the disaster exemplify how biased reporting can attribute to the action or better yet lack of action regarding the victims left in the destroyed city of New Orleans. This study will address how media does have a responsibility to report accurately without bias as they have a great deal of influence on Americans and their perception of the truth. Let's look how our media can influence us. Racial bias in reporting is important to address as it hinders one's ability to make a rational opinion about a media report. Racial equality cannot be reached if people are being reinforced to stereotype by the sources they trust to report the news. The media needs to focus on accuracy over sensationalism so that viewers and readers are given unbiased information to absorb. Racial biases in media reporting help solidify stereotypes and those who may not be exposed to certain minority groups or who trust their news source. An area of concern when reading or watching the news should be not only the accuracy of the information that one's provided, but also the manner in which it's delivered to the recipient. Racial bias in media reporting occurs when mass media portrays an event, but then highlights race, whether intentional or not, as a possible means for the incident, behavior, or outcome. Racial bias in reporting is important to address as it hinders one's ability to make a rational opinion about a media report. Racial equality cannot be reached if people are being reinforced to stereotype by the sources they trust for reporting the news. The media needs to focus on accuracy over sensationalism so that viewers and readers are given unbiased information to absorb. Racial biases in media reporting help solidify stereotypes in those who may not be exposed to certain minority groups or who trust their news source. Unfortunately, ratings are more likely tied to sensationalism than accuracy. This research looked at how racial biases in media reporting support the stereotypes that exist in much of society. It looks at Hurricane Katrina namely and how the victims were portrayed by the mass media and ultimately how this affected those people and the nation's perception of the disaster. This study will address the concerns of how quickly the nation responded to this disaster and how if reporting had been different without racial bias, how the response may have been quicker. If the reporting had been without any type of bias, would the nation have been more responsive? The research will look closely at how those affected could have been viewed as destitute victims and not as unworthy thieves by many had these reports been with, made without racial bias. This research was guided by the cultural studies theory. This theory is rooted in the work of Karl Marx and it's defined as follows. The theory maintains that the media represent ideologies of the dominant class in society. The theory is concerned with how the media is influenced by profit and how the power and influence of the media can affect perception of culture by their audience. This is relevant as this research is addressing biased reporting by the media. Another theory that we look to is standpoint theory. It asserts that people occupy different social standpoints and understand the world from their vantage point. Developed by Hartsock to evaluate social behavior between men and women, standpoint theory was originally addressed by Hegel and later Marx to evaluate social behavior of different social classes toward each other. Those higher up tend to see situations from their point with partial understanding of others with lower social standings. Not understanding poverty or the limitations it provides may skew one's view on another's ability to survive in the midst of a tragedy such as Hurricane Katrina. The influence of mass media and the subsequent lack of powerful support and empathy for the victims will be discussed later in our study. Now there is a history of bias in the United States. There are numerous studies that show that African Americans are overrepresented as criminals and more likely to be arrested when compared with their white counterparts. They are also more likely to be depicted as menacing than Caucasians charged with the same crime. Although African Americans represent approximately 14% of the U.S. population, they comprise more than 40% of arrests for violent crimes. African Americans are less likely to be portrayed as homicide victims on network and cable programs at about 22% than actuality, which is about 48%, according to crime reports. As the victim, African Americans are disproportionately portrayed in media reporting versus the reality. 
Prior research shows that there's a link between negative judgments of black suspects, but not white hypothetical suspects, and racialized crime news. Scholars have argued that this link occurs because of the overrepresentation of black criminality in the news. Research also shows that black criminals are more likely to be associated with violent rather than nonviolent crimes. The exposure provided by the mass media, its attention to crime news, and the trust that is placed on these news mediums by their audience are all related to the perception of blacks as violent. Throughout history, African Americans have struggled for equality. Having a mass media system that reports news inadequately, promoting racial stereotype, only heightens the racial divide. This report will also look at how biased media coverage contributes to the devastating aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. To give a little background, Hurricane Katrina happened on August 29, 2005, 10 years ago, in the Gulf Coast area. Katrina was a Category 3 hurricane with winds ranging from 100 to 140 miles per hour. Katrina killed more than 2,000 people and caused $100 billion in damage. As tragedy struck Louisiana, the nation was plagued by unsupported media accounts depicting victims as criminals and reflecting racial biases in mass media reporting. A national disaster of no one's doing, Hurricane Katrina impacted many lives, predominantly those impoverished and minority groups housed in the areas that were most affected. The government had ordered a last-minute evacuation for New Orleans, but did not offer support to many who had no means to evacuate. Labeled as non-compliant or deviant, many of these victims had no choice in their fates that day. For the rest of the nation and the world, mass media was the prime source to assess and report the situation of New Orleans following Hurricane Katrina. The reliance of the mass media may have been very influential in the decisions that led to many of the tragic events in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Again, the victims were depicted as criminals. The victims were predominantly impoverished and minority groups. Last minute evacuation efforts and the order without offering support to any of these people that didn't have the means to evacuate. They were labeled non-compliant or deviant, and the mass media is the primary source of information for most Americans who were learning about this tragedy at the time. One of the studies that was used in my research uh, reviewed the responsibility framing approach, which means it is centered on how the description of events influence the determination of responsibility for those events. Uh, the study elaborated more on how the approach works. Race enters the theoretical framework in two possible ways. The first, associated with the related field of priming research, predicts that racial cues in news stories make race more salient in individuals' determination of responsibility. Second, there is the possibility of desperate patterns of attribution for blacks and whites driven by the connection of their social group to the question at hand. So when someone's race is apparent in news images or commentary, viewers can become sensitized to their own ethnicity. This process can affect how they evaluate the issue. Racial priming research has found that by including images that can identify race in news stories, the media can actually activate a white person's stereotype concerning black people and can lead to a negative evaluation of those individuals involved in the story. It can also lead white viewers to associate black people with social problems such as crime. The depictions by the mass media of what remained of New Orleans after the wake of Hurricane Katrina was a driving force for the actions, or better yet, lack of action, by the U.S. government and the opinions of viewers across the nation and the world. Two news service photographs were taken in front of a flooded grocery and achieved wide circulation on the Internet. In one of the photos, a black man is wading through water, carrying a carton of soft drinks and a full garbage bag. The second photo shows a white couple carrying food and drinks through similar floodwaters. Although the photos were nearly identical, aside from the obvious physical differences in people, the photos were released with very distinct captions. The first caption began with, a young man walks through chest deep floodwater after looting a grocery store. The caption for the second photo read, two residents wade through chest deep water after finding bread and soda from a local grocery school store. The only difference in photos? The race of the parties depicted. One person is looting, but the others are finding. Doesn't seem like there's any difference here except for the race of those in the pictures. The study focused on how media's depiction of the victims of Hurricane Katrina directly affected the attitudes of the viewing public towards the victims and the subsequent treatment and rescue efforts by the government. The cultural studies theory guides the research maintaining that the media represent ideologies of the dominant class in society, those who are white. 
The standpoint theory helps us understand how those in dominant class may not understand nor be able to relate to those in a subordinate class, such as a minority race or those impoverished. By their inability to relate, those in power cannot fully understand or empathize with those who are victimized. The following are the research questions that I had here in the study. The first one, do photographs that show the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina without showing any victims elicit an empathetic response from Caucasian individuals? Research question two, do reactions to articles that include photos of victims of Hurricane Katrina differ depending on the race of those in the photos? Research question three, does the Caucasian public feel that racial profiling was apparent in the media coverage of Hurricane Katrina? And research question four, do the reactions of the Caucasian public change after viewing several of the media articles covering the tragedy? I'll briefly go over the methods here. Uh, the participants that were included are 102 Caucasian adults, ages 20 to 70 years old. The mean age was 47 years old. All participants reside in the United States. 59 were female, 43 were male. 39% of those involved were either attending college, had, had attended college, or obtained a degree. 61% of the participants had not attended college. All consented to the study involvement and agreed to participate on a study that was aiming to evaluate responses for media coverage of the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. The target sampling frame were adult Caucasian residents of the United States, and we used questions that involved a Likert scale, and they used articles that were emailed to the participants for review after initially being questioned about their general attitudes and knowledge concerning Katrina. Participants were initially sent questionnaires about their feelings concerning the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and seeking out knowledge that they had already on the disaster. The participants were then emailed links to articles pertaining to Hurricane Katrina so they could review them. There were specific questions asked after each article to assess the participant's reaction to the article, reflection on how they perceived race to motivate the way the article was written, and their feelings and or empathy toward the black residents that were victims of Hurricane Katrina. The participants were also asked questions pertaining to how the picture and media coverage that they were exposed to affected, if at all, how they perceived the disaster and the victims. The data was meant to gauge how Caucasian adults empathize with a primarily black community of victims after being exposed to highly racialized reporting that criminalizes the behavior of black victims. The majority of participants that were involved initially felt empathy towards the victims. After several weeks of media exposure, 40% of the participants felt that the victims should have evacuated New Orleans. After reviewing all of the articles used in this study, 68% felt that the media reports did criminalize the behavior of black victims more so than their white counterparts. After reviewing all of the articles used in the study, 32% of the participants felt that their view towards the victims of Hurricane Katrina had changed to be more empathetic to black victims of the tragedy. Biases in media reporting may not only affect the opinions of those consuming the information, but also have drastic consequences for those who are being victimized by the reports. In the case of Hurricane Katrina, if media representations had been less racially charged and more representative of the disparity of the victims, it is possible that assistance could have been available more quickly to those who were left behind. It is important to address issues to prevent further tragedies such as this nation's response to the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Racial bias in media reporting does affect perception and it does have consequences. And in closing, we live in America. Who would think this is America? You see two photos here. It looks like we're in a different country, we're in a different state, we're in a different atmosphere altogether. You have a cover of a magazine, New Orleans, police state, with a quote, ethnic cleansing American style. You have another picture depicting a refugee coming out of a manhole that's being arrested for looting. And this man doesn't even have a bed to lie down in. And he's one of the victims as well, but he's being treated as if he were a criminal. This can be avoided. Let's change America.